Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. Exciting morning already on the road to the Preakness. Uh, big news with the scratch of Muth. Yeah, big, big, big news this morning. We are we are taping. We're recording this Horse Center uh, Wednesday morning. We just found out a few minutes ago that uh, Muth uh, uh, spiked a fever uh, the morning after arriving to Baltimore. So he is out of the Preakness. He, Matt, I thought he was going to be a heavy favorite, so it sure does change the complexion of this race. Let's get right to the field now. I said, you're going to see some... Uh, a little little chicken scratch on our uh, graphic this week because we rushed as i said we just found out about the scratch of the favorite muth so we have a new morning line there with the scratch and of course the kentucky derby winner matt mystic dan is now the favorite yeah uh, without question now uh with muth uh, being gone he certainly uh, was going to get a lot of action muth i think he was going to be a heavy favorite uh, Etc. It seemed like Baffert would be coming uh, with loaded guns to try and get this uh, uh, ninth Preakness victory. Yeah, the Baffert factor is big here. Um, people missed him in the Kentucky Derby. A lot of people missed having Baffert in the Kentucky Derby. So I think Muth was going to be a heavy favorite. And now I think his other horse is probably going to go all the way up to the second choice, Imagination. And, and frankly, that's okay with me because I'm not a big Imagination fan in this spot. But let's start out. Let's start from the rail out, Matt. Uh, Mugatu looks like the one horse that I can confidently throw out here. Trainer Jeff Angler has this son of Blowfield coming in. Jersey Joe Bravo in the saddle. But he has him coming in off, off maybe his best race yet when he was a, a well-beaten fifth in the bluegrass yeah jersey joe bravo in the saddle and jersey joe bravo will be back at monmouth park this summer just as a, uh just as a digression there yeah i don't i don't see this horse having any chance at all only has one win in his career and that was on a synthetic track three recent uh uh uh, runs in stakes races have not been particularly good, although he was fifth in the bluegrass on the dirt. Yeah, and maybe that was his best performance yet, but still he was certainly a non-threatening, kind of clunked up for fifth in that race. Now the horse who, I guess you could say clunked up for fifth in the Wood Memorial, I do like better. Uh, his name, of course, is Uncle Heavy. Uncle Heavy comes to us from uh, a successful trainer, Butch Reed Jr., I read Ortiz Jr. will jump on Uncle Heavy this time. He won the Withers on a muddy track two starts ago, Matt. Uh, this is a horse I could see rallying up for a piece. I think Uncle Heavy is better than that fifth place finish in the Wood Memorial. Um, you'll get odds on him because he, he failed in the Wood Memorial. I think he's got a much better shot than, than the one in here. And uh, you see 20 to 1 on our morning line. Yeah, I agree with that, uh, Brian. Um, Uncle Heavy will uh, certainly get more attention than um, Mugatu, who uh, is going to be, will definitely be the big long shot in here. Yeah, Uncle Henry, ran, he ran a good one uh, in the Withers, and that was going a mile and an eighth. And after that race, you know, Butch Reed was excited about the prospects of maybe getting to run longer. He'll get to run a little bit longer in here. Uh, um, uh, certainly the the fifth place finish in the Wood Memorial was a disappointment. You get IRAD up and, and, you know, basically you have the best rider in the country on the horse. Um, certainly that will have a little bit of downward effect on Uncle Heavy's odds, but I don't know how much considering. Yeah, I, I don't think he'll get bet a lot. He lo he looks like the seventh choice in an eight-horse field here, and he's one that I would definitely consider using underneath. Now, I mentioned the muddy track in the Withers. That could be important, Matt, because 
The forecast for Saturday uh, at Baltimore at Pimlico is for rain. Uh, it's not. It doesn't look like a, a downpour deluge type of day, but uh, it looks like there is a good amount of rain expected Saturday at Baltimore. So we could be talking about a track that's an off track for the Preakness. Uncle Heavy won the Withers on a Money track. Catching Freedom ran a good race on an off track in the Risen Star when he was third behind Sierra Leone. And of course, the Kentucky Derby winner, Mystic Dan, romped by eight lengths on an off track uh, in the Southwest Stakes at Oakland Park. So keep an eye on the weather. Uh, that would play a part, of course, in our Preakness handicapping and your Preakness betting. Number three, Matt, is Catching Freedom. I mentioned he ran a good race in the Risen Star. Uh, Catching Freedom runs a good race pretty much every time for Brad Cox. He ran another good race. He was out finished by Forever Young. And, of course, Sierra Leone in the Kentucky Derby, he was fourth. But uh, beaten less than two lengths, it was another strong performance. And now, all of a sudden, he is the top come-from-behind horse in the race. Yeah, I agree with you, Brian. Certainly, uh, Catching Freedom is a horse that we both have been liking. He had that uh, impressive victory in the Louisiana Derby. Of course, this is the... Uh, entry in the Preakness for Brad Cox with Flavian Pratt on board. Uh, um, yeah, basically has never run a bad race. Um, again, you know, I think we all need some time to uh, adjust mentally to the the new kind of odds that will be uh, that we will be getting on horses. Uh, frankly, I wasn't going to be betting on Muth. Uh, in the Preakness or using youth in my tickets. And now he's out of the race, which means all of a sudden uh, uh, the horses that we liked, whether people like Mystic Dan or Catching Freedom, uh, their odds are now going to be significantly less. Yeah, they're going to be lower, but I think Catching Freedom still will be the third choice in here, if I'm right, and, and people really jump on the Baffert the other Baffert, if you will, imagination with Frankie DeTore up. So in this field, that's become easier without Muth. You're right. I, I was going to try to beat Muth as, as maybe the even money favorite in this Preakness. But uh, without Muth, I think it becomes an easier spot. Catching Freedom coming out of before the Kentucky Derby, a win in the Louisiana Derby. That suddenly looks like a key race for the Preakness. It's at the same dis distance as the Preakness, a mile three sixteenths. And two of the uh, main uh, horses in there, Catching Freedom first, Tuscan Gold third. We're going to talk a little bit more about Tuscan Gold in a minute. Both of them ran well in the Louisiana Derby. Uh, let's also take a look at this uh, pace projector, Matt. Of course, we haven't had a chance to get Muth off the list. But they were saying beforehand, imagination was the speed of the speed. And there is some speed. Muth is the Four, so he's out. Take out the four, and it looks like the Lucas horses, number six, he's the gray, and number seven, just steel, will be the ones pressing the pace most of uh, 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 imagination or going with imagination to some extent. And then you see the Derby winner there sitting really close on the rail. That sounds familiar, Matt. Yes, I guess it does, but you know. Uh, uh jockey brian hernandez doesn't have a field of 20 to worry about here and and uh securing a good trip is not going to be as difficult as it was uh, uh a couple of weeks ago so you know i don't think that rail trip is is an is an essential thing uh in in the in the preakness yeah, and, and it'll be interesting to see if the horses, the speed horses ahead of him were expecting imagination and sees the gray and just steel are all outside and all the horses inside want to uh, want to rally now that the four has been scratched so mystic dan certainly can go right down to the rail behind the speed and and see if he can work out a good trip uh matt he ran a very good kentucky derby again i, I liked him in the kentucky derby i was one of those people who thought the arkansas derby was a lot better than it looked on paper of course we all liked his southwest three starts back I, I guess the question with Mystic Dan, he, he likes an off track if, if it is an off track. I guess the question with Mystic Dan is, is he going to come back strong after two weeks off? Uh, we didn't really ask that about catching freedom because he's been so consistent in his career. Mystic Dan a little less consistent 
And that one time he did come back from short rest, although it was early in his career as a two-year-old, he didn't run his best. Well, it's hard to know, uh, Brian, but certainly uh, we can say for sure that the Kentucky Derby was the time to have Mystic Dan uh, uh, when he won the race at, I think it was 16 to one or so. And now we're looking at him, uh, at him being the favorite. So, uh, you know, that is a, a significant difference. But uh, historically, since the year 2000, there have been seven horses that have come from the Kentucky Derby to win the Preakness. Obviously, we got two Triple Crown winners in there. We got a few other Baffert horses in there. And, and uh, uh, so, you know, it's not that unusual a thing to happen. Yeah, it's not that unusual thing to happen too, Matt. I look at the trainer of, of some of these horses who have performed well coming out of the Kentucky Derby and some of the horses who have not trained well uh, or not done well in the Preakness coming out of the Kentucky Derby. And, and I do see a pattern there where horses that are trained by trainers who don't mind running their horses, uh, Baffert, for instance, have done well. Uh, coming back in two weeks, where others maybe who are not the horses uh, or are not in the barns where they want to run every two weeks, maybe a Todd Pletcher, for instance, they generally don't do as well coming out of the Kentucky. We'll see. Mystic Dan, Kenny McPeak, he runs his horses. He's come back from the Derby well. I, I think there's a lot to like, but you're right. The odds are different. I, I, I had him. I had him at 18 to 1. <laughs> But I, I don't know if I can drop him from my tickets here now. And, and I certainly think he's one of the horses to beat. By the way, that's nine to five if there's any trouble reading it as the uh, as our new morning line favorite with the scratch of youth for the Kentucky Derby winner. Then we got Lucas Lucas, Matt, as we saw on the time, uh, time form pace projector. Sees the gray, just steal, both have speed. Sees the gray, uh, kind of dis a little disappointing uh, before last time. He sat just off a fast pace in that Pat Day mile, and he was a nice winner of the Pat Day mile. Justile, on the other hand, has run some very good races, probably more accomplished than he's the gray. So he went to the Kentucky Derby, was part of the pace, and really backed out. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, I think one thing I want to point out, uh, Brian, if you would if you would flip the pace projector back up uh, on the screen for a second, I would appreciate that. Um, we've talked so many times about uh, – the pace projector in these big races, having the fast pace button up, showing that they expect uh, a fast, fast uh, fractions. It's not up on the pace projector. It wasn't even up when Muth was in the race. So we're talking about the speed in here. I might prefer to call them the horses that are on the lead because I don't know if I necessarily expect really fast fractions. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect fast fractions either. But on the other hand, there's three horses that I could see on the lead. Uh, I think at least two of them will go out. And I don't think it'll be a slow pace either. And, and that Derby winner can do a lot of things. That Derby winner can be right there or it can be a little farther back depending on the pace. So you've got four horses there uh, reasonably close. I wouldn't suspect the Chad Brown horse, number eight, Tuscan Gold, to be real far back as well. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that Chad Brown horse because Chad Brown, other than Baffert, he's the guy who's had the most success in, in the Preakness in recent years. And he's done it with horses that have skipped the Derby. Tuscan Gold, of course, skipped the Derby. He's only run three races, Matt. He's only had two races this year, uh, but they've been good. And in a maiden win, nice maiden win down in Florida before going to run a solid third, uh, again, beaten less than two lengths. By catching freedom and honor Marie in that mile 316th Louisiana Derby. Yeah, and Chad Brown's got a couple of the uh, Preakness wins uh, in the last uh, uh, six, seven years with uh, cloud computing back, I think, in 2017 and last year with, uh, with early voting. Tuscan Gold, I think, for sure, is a three year old that kind of has been overshadowed by his stable mate Sierra Leone uh, on the Derby Trail and and certainly in the uh, with Sierra Leone in the Kentucky Derby, Tuscan Gold uh, uh, got onto the Kentucky Derby 
uh, after a nice uh, maiden victory at Gulfstream Park and ran in that Louisiana Derby that we've talked so much and finished a good third. Yeah, that was a nice performance in only his third lifetime race going a mile 316th. He, he looks like a horse who can handle the distance. Catching Freedom certainly was finishing better in that Louisiana Derby, but Tuscan Gold uh, certainly looks like a horse moving forward. Uh, maybe he was third string in Chad Brown's eyes. Maybe not. Domestic products he seemed to like a little bit who entered the Kentucky Derby as well. Uh, or maybe Tuscan Gold has just been always a little bit behind in conditioning and was looking at this Preakness all along. Number nine, Imagination, Matt. This is the horse I think is going to get bet probably more than he should be because of Baffert. Maybe even a little Dettori in there too. Uh, but especially Baffert. Uh, did not beat much in the San Felipe when he won by a photo. And then last time he was beaten late, put up a good fight, as he always does, put up a good fight, went second to Stronghold in the Santa Anita Derby. Stronghold ran an okay race in the Kentucky Derby, nothing special. Yeah, and 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 he's ridden by Frankie Dettori, and that certainly will uh, attract some money in there. I, I guess Imagination was well-liked, uh, uh, from the beginning, he was a million dollar yearling purchase. But I find it interesting, Brian, that uh, in his last three races, and you mentioned the Santa Anita Derby, uh, second place, and the win in the San Felipe. And before that, he had was second in an allowance. All three of those races were, uh, he uh, was right in a close finish at the wire, at the finish by a neck, by a head, by a neck. Uh, uh, so I don't know. I, I don't see that as a, as a big positive at all. Yeah, they were short fields as well, although now we're only talking about an eight-horse field in the Preakness. I, I would think Imagination uh, goes uh, right out for that lead from his outside post position and see, sees how uh, easy it is to slow it down in this $2 million grade one second leg of the Triple Crown. Uh, if he's able to get the lead easy and uh, coast down the backstretch, he does become a horse to uh, to, to to really watch in here. But uh, at the odds, I, I don't see a lot of positive value with Baffert's other horse, Imagination, now that Muth is out. Matt, we're going to jump right into the Phillies. Uh, I think we have another interesting betting race here. It reminds me a little bit of the Kentucky Oaks. Uh, much smaller field. The Kentucky Oaks, of course, had 14. The Black Eyed Susan, this grade two, a mile and eighth race Friday. Uh, both of these races will be race 13, the Preakness Saturday, the Black Eyed Susan on Friday. Uh, but I think there's a, a real question who will be favored like we had in the Kentucky Oaks. And I, I think there's a lot of possible winners. I saw the morning line. I just I finally saw the morning line for the Black Eyed Susan. And I was surprised to see seven Corpasso as the favorite on the morning line, Matt. If she is the favorite, I think she's a very beatable favorite in this Black Eyed Susan. Yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, Corpasso is a uh, uh, oh, West Coaster coming uh, to the Black Eyed Susan for uh, Peter Erton. And last time uh, this horse was third in uh, Santa Anita Oaks, but was pretty far back. Yeah. Yeah, it was a small field and she was beaten eight lengths in that Santa Anita Oaks. She won a maiden race by a nose the start before that. Certainly there's potential there uh, for the daughter of Vino Rosso for trainer Peter Erden. But uh, as the morning line favorite, I, let's say I was a little surprised that she is the morning line favorite. She's not on ours. Uh, number one, Jeannie Marie uh, is an interesting long shot match. She's uh, another one from trainer Butch Reed. Pretty lightly raced, especially because her first two races came in the summer of her two-year-old season, long layoff, and she's come back with two starts since. Yeah, uh, uh, second uh, in the Weber City Miss uh, Stakes in Maryland. Boy, Brian, that's a that's the name of a, a, a Philly mayor, Weber City Miss from our past that was a heck of a runner. I digress uh, again. It's trainer Butch Reed, and and who is based at parks and and i i know butch reed a good bit because he ships horses up to uh aqueduct and to new york fairly frequently but i'll tell you what brian when he ships up from uh parks into big stakes races 
his horses are ready to run. So I expect that Jeannie Marie uh, uh, is going to be ready to run or else uh, Reed wouldn't be sending her into the Black Eyed Suit, Susan. Yeah, Butch Reed, I think, has a possibility in both of these races. Uh, both will be long shots, Uncle Heavy and Jeannie Marie, but I think both could run, outrun their odds. I will uh, uh, say that uh, this time sh he's shipping down, Matt, because yes. it's down to down to Baltimore. But I, I know what you mean. Yeah, Butch Reed is a trainer we've liked for years. And, of course, this one uh, coming from Parks or Laurel, I guess, uh, more recently, uh, was beaten by call another play last time, but it was only her second start after a long layoff, possible to improve. Ringy Dingy is coming off a long layoff for trainer Danny Gargan. She's also two for four lifetime with a stakes win. Uh, it came in a week stakes race at Delaware where she was three to ten, and then she did nothing in the Demoiselle when she was seventh. It wasn't off track, but that's the last time we've seen her. Yeah, uh, uh, the coming back, so that's... Uh... That's a five month or so layoff uh, for Ringy Dingy. Uh, uh, in that's gonna put her in here tough. Yeah, it, it's hard to jump on Ringy Dingy's, uh, the daughter of Dialed In, Ringy Dingy's uh, bandwagon here. Uh, number three is Lemon Muffin. Matt, yeah, it's hard to know what to make a Lemon Muffin. I thought she looked really good when she rolled from the back of the, the pack and uh, uh, won the honeybee, the grade three honeybee in impressive fashion, but she just hasn't shown up when she faced Torpedo Anna last uh, last two times in the fantasy and the Kentucky Oaks. Maybe she's looking for a little lesser competition. Uh, she beat some decent horses in the honeybee, can't throw her out, but there, there's so little to go on with those uh, fantasy and Kentucky Oaks performances. We don't know what lemon muffin we're gonna get here. Yeah, that's that's for sure, Brian. Uh, those last two races, I get it. She was running behind uh, 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 probably the best three-year-old filly in in Thorpeda, Anna, and but boy, she did very little running with a seventh in the Fantasy and then an eighth in the Kentucky Oaks. Yeah, yeah, she she could be the beneficiary of a pretty good pace in here, Matt. Let's take a look at that now real quick. The time form U.S. pace projector has Lemon Muffin, of course, well back in the field or, or pretty far back in the field. Maybe not as far back as I expected. Uh, who could ask for Mo is the one that's really far back there. Uh, but they're saying fast pace. They are projecting a fast pace here with several and several of the uh, of the favorites as well. Eight, Recharge, seven, Corpaso five gun song. So uh, that, that could help Phillies who come from off the pace, like Lemon Muffin, the three, call another play, the four, and the number six, who could ask for Mo. If it is a fast pace, Matt, uh, maybe that helps Lemon Muffin. Maybe that also helps call another play who has really come around for trainer Michael Trombetta of late. Call another play was going nowhere fast with a couple of really bad performances as a two-year-old. Uh, but then she has turned it around this year, and she's, in fact, won three easy races in a row, including the Weber City Miss last time over Jeannie Marie. And you're right. The Weber, uh, Weber City Miss was a really nice mare back in the day. Yeah, back in the day, right? Racing in uh, mid-Atlantic, mid yes. And, and uh, call another play. He looks like a horse that – and I think it is a little hard to know what the odds are going to be in here, but I'm – pretty confident that this is a horse that's going to come with good odds also for an excellent trainer in Michael Trombetta that certainly has this filly going in the right direction with three in a row, uh, uh, the Weber City Miss before that, uh, an allowance race, and before that, a $40,000 claiming race. So uh, this, this horse is moving up the ladder. She's moving up the ladder, but I think that Weeper City Miss showed me something. And as we saw, maybe the pace is in her advantage. One of the horses to beat, I think, in here is Gunsong, Johnny Velasquez. Horse Center has her as the uh, favorite, uh, not on the morning line, though. Johnny Velasquez will ride this daughter of Gunrunner for Mark Henning. She's won two of five, Matt. She's been running against good horses in Florida, and, and I don't think you could take too much away from that Gulfstream Park Oaks performance. She did fade to fourth there, but she battled on the lead. And like I said, good horses in that race. Yeah, yeah, battled on the lead. But uh, I guess from the, the pace projector that we saw, 
she's going to get some pressure out there uh, with that fast pace projected. Uh, she did have an allowance victory uh, uh, heading into that Gulfstream Park Oats. Yeah, number six was the horse that was at the back of that pace projector. Who could ask for Mo? Um, she just hasn't quite got it done for Shug McGahey. Maybe she's moving down in class just a little bit. Maybe not. Hard to say. Second in the Sun Coast, fifth in the Devona Dale. Pretty well beaten fourth last time in the Gazelle. If the pace is fast, she might have a shot to move forward. But those performances are not inspiring me to jump on her bandwagon here. No, uh, uh, with a horse trained by Shug McGahey, you you expect their form to to be getting better heading into a big race, and I don't know, I just don't see that here. Yeah, the daughter of Uncle Mo, just the last two races especially, does not look like she's about to win a pretty big grade two race here on Friday. Uh, getting back to the field, I think we have some favorites on the outside. The morning line favorite, as I mentioned, her Corposo. Yeah, she could be good. Tyler Gaffleon, uh, Peter Erton, uh, one out of three so far, kind of like Tuscan Gold, but I don't know. I, I didn't love the maiden win two starts back. I didn't love the third by eight lengths in the Santa Anita Oaks. If she's the chalk in here, I, I'm, I'm certainly going to try to beat her, Matt. Oh, no question. I agree, Brian. Yeah, Corposo coming off the third in the San Anita Oaks. Recharge is also coming off a loss, but I see more from Recharge, frankly, than I do from Corposo. Uh, she won three for she won her first three starts nicely all over the place: uh, Oklahoma, uh, Texas, and New Mexico. The last being the Sunland Park Oaks with a game win there. In fact, that's pictured there on the graphic. Uh, she went last time into Torpedo Anna's Lane. And uh, had no answers for her when they straightened out in the fantasy. But uh, she, too, was pressured on the lead in the fantasy. And her fifth place finish isn't all that bad. And, and then you see what Torpedo Anna did in the Kentucky Oaks. So I, I would think Recharge is another one. Yet another speed horse, like the seven, like the five, though. But Recharge is one that uh, looks pretty good on a class level coming into this Black Eyed Susan. Yeah, I think she's getting a much uh, a much better spot in terms of the company uh, in this field. Maybe not so much uh, uh, in the pace, uh, though. Yeah, recharge. Uh, recharge looks like uh, uh, even she could be the morning line favorite. It'll be interesting to see how this race is bet actually, because there's three or four horses I could see being the favorite. Uh, I don't think Matt and I are going to lean to the favorites, though, in this Black Eyed season, and we might not lean to the favorites in the Preakness. Without further ado, Matt, uh, let's do our suggested wagers after talking about these two big races from Pimlico this weekend. I'm going to let you go first with your suggested wager, and I think you're going with both races. Yes, absolutely. I am going to do the two-day. I like these two-day uh, big race day, race weekend wagers. I'm going to do the, the Black Eyed Susan, Preakness, Daily Double, and I'm going to start out with two two longer shots. I don't like the horses that might be favorite, the top three, four horses. I don't like them at all, Brian. This is a race that's screaming long shot to me. I'm going to use both of those horses that we mentioned from that were in that Weber City Miss race, Jeannie Marie, and call another play. I am going to use them with Catching Freedom, Tuscan Gold, and Imagination. Matt, uh, a couple of things I want to say. Uh, I, I wish you good luck, and I hope you're right, because you have my top pick in the Black Eyed Susan there as one of your two. Uh, but uh, I worry about the Derby winner. Uh, uh, beating you again that it, it could happen and I, I i don't want to see that happen i certainly like him better than imagination but i could be completely wrong my top pick though in the preakness is catching freedom i i think this race sets up well for catching freedom off track or fast track i think he handles it well consistent brad cox i feel very confident that catching freedom will run another good race there's enough speed in there where i think he can uh, make his move. He he makes his move every start. I think the distance is right. I liked his derby. Catching Freedom is my top play. 
My second pick, uh, it's between Mystic Dan, the Derby winner, and Tuscan Gold, uh, who Catching Freedom beat last time in the Louisiana Derby. Tuscan Gold's last time, that is. I, I think with the possibility of an off track, and uh, I bet Mystic Dan in the Derby, I can't get off him here. I'm going to stick with the Derby winner as my second horse. So for me, simple, Catching Freedom and Mystic Dan. I'm going to box him. Uh, won't be a big payoff, but I, I, I think, you know, $20 act of box, I'll be happy with winning this ticket. And I think I have a good chance to win it. Uh, I, I think the Baffert and Brown horses will probably get bet quite a lot. So that's part of my thinking with that bet. Matt, uh, we didn't do top picks yet. You, you might have gotten an idea who our top picks from, our suggested wagers, but let's get to them. Uh, in the Preakness uh, or in the Black Eyed Susan, I'm sorry, you're you're really on that long shot. Yeah, I am. Uh, uh, I like that race. I'm as I said, I don't like any of the favorites, so I'm going with a long shot. Uh, uh, Jeannie Marie and your pick were not separated by very much, and I do like Butch Reed. Yeah, call another play for me. Uh, call another play. I, th I think uh, you certainly got the best of Jeannie Marie in the, in the late stages there, the last furlong of the Weaver City Mist, just like the way she's moving forward. But I respect your your long shot there. She's got a shot in, in a wide-open black-eyed Susan. I'm going local, although call another play has been winning at Laurel. I hope she can transfer that great form to Pimlico. In the Preakness, there's your top pick, Matt. Looks like the fourth choice to me. Yeah, again, I'm going with more of a price. Uh, hey, I, I certainly respect Mystic Dan's chances uh, to win the Preakness, but but I'm going to be honest, I didn't like him. I didn't bet him at 18 to 1. If I was going to bet on Mystic Dan, I certainly should have done it in the Kentucky Derby. So uh, now going to him at, at uh, short odds of 8 to 5 or 7 to 5 or whatever they are, I'll pass and go with – Chad Brown and Tuscan Gold. Chad has certainly had the formula in the Derby the last several years. Yeah, the yeah, that's true. With lightly race horses skipping the Derby, Tuscan Gold, another one. I, I do really like Catching Freedom best, though. Catching Freedom is uh, he I, he was my top pick before Muth was scratched, and I believe Tuscan Gold was your top pick before Muth was scratched as well. We were looking for better odds in the Preakness. We're still going to get decent odds. Uh, if I'm right, Mystic Dan is the favorite and Imagination is the second choice. I think Catching Freedom is probably still the best horse in this race, but I like him coming back on short rest a little bit more than Mystic Dan. And uh, Catching Freedom for me uh, gets it done in the stretch without Sierra Leone to worry about. He's been winning every other race, been really good all year. He's my top pick in the Preakness Stakes. All right, Matt, before we go, let me get a parting shot from you, my friend. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting weekend of racing. I don't know what we're going to get for the track because uh, it's been raining. Uh, it's raining heavily here uh, in the mid-Atlantic, and I think more of it is expected. So uh, uh, we got a track that is going to be very wet as the week is coming to an end. So not sure how much of a chance it's going to get to be completely dry, but we shall see some interesting races uh, and we'll see if Mystic Dan can uh, win another and have a shot for a triple crown. That would always be fun to see a horse going for a triple crown. I, I'm a fan of Mystic Dan. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing him winning. That's why I have the exact box. But I do like catching freedom best. I think Mystic Dan's odds go down if it's a wet track as well. I think he becomes a bigger favorite if it's a wet track. Uh, I, we should thank everybody for watching. As always, Matt, we sure do appreciate it. We also want to thank uh, Candace Curtis and the Home Office for the Race Graphics. Derby Wars, our sponsor, the best contest site out there. And, of course, Time Form US for their pace projections. But most of all, we thank you for tuning in. Turn on those notifications. Make sure you subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation. Feel free to leave us a comment. We'll see you back uh, a little bit later next week talking about Preakness results and Memorial Day stakes right here on Horse Center. Until then, good luck in the Preakness. We'll see you soon.